How's it going, guys? Today, I think uh, I'm gonna work on making the uh, swing arm, and uh, kind of got it laid out. Like the rear carrier piece is directly below the axle, and then I got trailing arms going up to the front hinging point. Now that is looking kind of light, but bear with me for a second. Um, I don't want to use a whole bunch of giant heavy things because there's a lot that goes into the swing arm. So um, that stuff there is eighth inch thick, and I'll show you what else is going to go on it. After uh, those are all welded in, I'll need to make a rear piece that looks like this, and it'll come up, you know, come up like this and across and back down. And then I've seen other people use, put like an X through here. I'm not going to put the X through there. What I'm going to do is I think I'm going to use uh, this piece of eighth inch thick steel. I'll just cut it out the shape into it and uh, fasten it to the back. Maybe later on I can get a hole saw and, oh, I was thinking wind. You know, drill some holes in it or something. You know, lighten it up. And then that piece will go on, you know, so you're looking at the ends of the hinging point and the uh, carrier. That piece will go welded on here and then come back down to here. Um, I think I'm going to put dual shocks on the back instead of one. So I might actually hook them to this. But then I'll have a piece coming from there down to here to support the, the shock impacting it. So that the uh, force is put on both both sections. So uh, well, we'll get started. All right. So the next thing is is to uh, needing to find something that is flat to make this on, so that the whole thing is square with itself. And um, I don't have a nice flat floor here. Um, you know, that thing there isn't square. So the best thing I can come up with is using this uh, pipe bender. And I don't know exactly how square it is, but like I got a 2x4 and it seems pretty flat as well. Um, so I'm going to go with this as using it as a work table and something that's flat. The only other thing I got to worry about now is maintaining the same length from here to here on both sides and then uh, yeah, probably well I'm a flat I was thinking maybe a measure from corner to corner but uh, I'll see you have to think about it alright so I got it all tacked together and uh, basically how I went about making it straight the board seems to be pretty straight because I I stand I stood this up so both part, uh, both both of these pieces were standing straight up off this board, uh, tacked in one, and then uh, flipped it over, having it standing, and tacked them there, and also laying it down flat on here. All it's true, it's true to the board. So it should be square. Um, even flipping it completely over, it's still flat to the board. So. It kind of verifies that it's pretty straight. Uh, so I guess we'll go start finish welding these up and then we can move on. Alright, we got it all all welded up. And it still seems to be pretty true. So uh, I guess we'll uh, start working on that uh, you know, rear rear piece that comes up like this. Start working on that. All right, I got the end piece made. Uh, it's not welded up yet. Um, measured out, 16 and 3 quarter is the width between the chamfers on there. And then what it is up here, just whatever I want it to be. Um, this 8 inches from here to here. Not that it really matters much, but. Um, yeah, so I got this welded up, and then uh, see what we get after that. Alright, I got this piece all welded up. 
uh, I didn't weld the, uh, the one side. It's, it's just tacked. I don't want to put this plate on here. I don't want the welds all sticking up. I'd just be grinding them off. Anyway, so when I weld the plate on, it's going to be, you know, probably at least tacked all the way around or something. And, uh, you know, so, so that will make it work. Alright, so I guess we can get this thing on the back of that. Alright, so I got that welded on there. Um, it didn't turn out all that pretty because it kept burning through. It kept burning through right there. So I had to keep adding to it and adding to it and build it back. But, uh, I am using some pretty ginormous rods too, so <laughs> you kind of end up with a giant bead anyways. But um, I'm going to see a lot of burning through when I go to put, right, you know, piling up weld anyways, when I go to put these in. You know, because whenever I go to, you, know, you can see here, you know, what kind of, I don't know, I suppose I could sit and notch it all out and all, and all that kind of crap, but I don't think I will. I'll just cut it to length and... Every time I try to start notching something out, then uh, next thing you know, it's too short, or, you know, if you make it too long, and then you go to notch it out, and then you realize that it's still too long after you go to notch it out, so I'll just probably just pile a bunch of weld on it. But, uh, I think it's looking pretty good for what it is. It'll be just fine. I think it'll be pretty cool once it's all done and painted and nobody will even notice anything about it. Let's we'll be worried about riding it around. But, uh, I got some more material like that. I'll cut another one of those. Get those guys in there. Well, I got it all done. Uh, some things about it didn't turn out as nice as what I'd like, but you know, like I said before, with you know I didn't notch out those things in the front so there was a lot of fill and there's a lot of weld on there but uh, I don't think I'm gonna put that back piece in it just because I don't think it's gonna need it with uh, if it was a shock just in the middle you know but given that I'm gonna put two shocks on there it's gonna be a lot more you know stable than what it, you know with the force of one side getting hit and there's going to be a shock on either side so I don't think it's going to need anything there but, uh, well I guess next up we'll uh, put the uh, A-arms on the frame get this thing up off the floor and I'll put the bearings in the swing arm stick it on the axle and kind of get a vision of what it looks like sitting on all fours and That'll allow me to start moving forward on fastening the swing arm. Alright guys, got it all kind of sitting in place. Got the, all the front end stuff in it and the height that it's going to be. Kind of gave it a little bit of a pitch in the frame. And I centered up the swing arm to the output shaft of the engine. Uh, one thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need the side case cover for this engine. Kind of slide it on there and, and so I can build the framing that's going to hold the swing arm in. That's, well, that's going to be a job. You know, because i got to have clearances for the engine and the side case and, you know, being able to get sprocket on and off, things like that. Which I think I can do it, but it's just going to be kind of a... A little bit of a project there all itself. Um, the axle right now is centered up in the swing arm. Um, the plan of making this so that the axle don't move around in here or slide in is there's little set screws on here but those are just to keep the race from turning on the axle. But I'm gonna make a ring that goes on here and that ring will get welded in place so that way the placement of the axle is always ever going to be in the same spot. Once it's centered up, that ring gets welded, then the axle will just come out that way and go back in and, and go right up against the bearing. Um, the other side, there is a hub that goes on here that holds the brake rotor. And just like I drilled a hole through here to bolt the hub on, I'm going to drill a hole through the brake rotor hub and um, so it'll, it'll 
you know, to holding the brake rotor fast and also holding the axle in place. And then brake caliper mount and stuff will have to get welded onto here, you know, things like that. So that's the plan so far. Subject to change at all times. But I think it looks pretty cool. This shed is not level, so the whole time I work on this thing, it's going to be um, like when I build a risers and stuff to hold this in the seat, I'm going to have to use all measurements from the frame up to get everything so that it's straight because I have established that the frame is straight on the bottom, so and flat, so nothing can be used as far as a level. You know, I have to use measurements only. But stand back this shed is so cooped up to work in but it makes it so much easier to weld here and and be able to come out here and work on it so it's just more convenient in a way to work on it here but then it's tight space I'm not even sure that this thing could even come out of this building through the door with all assembled it's I mean the back end can I've established that but I don't know about the front but um Alright, well, I'll catch you guys later, and uh, see ya.